It's the NBL show. We're back again with a new look, like a Buddy Ryan defense. It's Thursday night and you're crowded around your phone, television, tablet, or computer for a week in the NFL where Javon Wims of the Chicago Bears made his welterweight boxing debut. We got to witness America's team attempting an onside safety punt to try and beat the division-leading Philadelphia Eagles ah! at two for one. You buy one, you get one free. I said you buy one, you get one free. The Chargers entering the spirit of the season, getting dressed up for Halloween as the Atlanta Falcons surrendering a lead in the last second again and Tom Brady doing his best impression of me in the morning standing over my bin trying to get the coffee grounds out of my cafetiere but this week on the NVL show what do we have it's Thursday night you know it's going to be spicy a little bit spicy we've got a conversation with Roberto Aguayo laces in laces out and we've also got two new segments so stick around and find out about those oh hello Muscovado <laughs> And that with the with the pressure I had, you know, you can't you can't miss. You have a chance to play in the NFL or hey, no, Rosa! Rosa! no, you're at home. That ref should have gave that to me. It was right <laughs> <over> that, right? <laughs> no, how dare you stand up in front of the kickers no. anonymous and say that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's Thursday night and you know what that means. Well, oh, wait a minute. The pick is in, Hugh. And it's National Vintage League who are on the clock. And we are taking proudly with the 59th overall pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the three-time First Team All-American, the two-time ACC champion, the 2013 Lou Groza Award winner, the 2013 BCS Natty Champ, it's the Florida State kicker, Mr. Roberto Aguayo, coming yeah. on in. Yeah. How are you doing, oh, sir? What's up, guys? Glad to be on. This is great. You're the biggest get we've had. I appreciate it. <laughs> As she mentioned, I mean, this, if you're not familiar, is a man that has experienced the full gamut of what life has to offer. Um, and we're going to start right at the beginning. So let's go back to 2012, Roberto. You're redshirting at FSU. Was it always going to be FSU? Okay, it was always going to be FSU if Coach Fisher gave me the opportunity, and he did, so that's why I committed early. Honestly, I told people if I wouldn't have went to Florida State, I would have probably went to Florida. That oh, really? Uh, <laughs> that would have probably been a different ride, but um, I'm glad everything worked out the way it did. Won a national championship, broke a lot of records, won a Lou Groza. Yeah, a you know. couple of records, a couple of awards. Yeah, 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 so. Just shrugging it off. No, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna focus on those things. Uh, okay, so... Roberto is the greatest college kicker there has ever been. And if you disagree, I will fight you. As, as unthreatening as that is, uh, it's still <laughs> true. You never missed a point after touchdown. 69 of 78, perfect inside of 40. Here's the thing with FSU that I'm sure you were aware going in. FSU had a history of losing games in the last minute, big games yeah, it was. on the oh, final yeah. kick. Trust me, every time the Miami game would roll around, you see the highlights of the wide left and the wide right. Yeah. And, and wide right again. Play, yeah, <laughs> and and honestly, I went through the. I felt the last one because I was at a I was at a party, one of my uh, friends' par birthday parties, and I wore my FSU jersey, and they were Miami fans, and I was watching the game. All the kids were running around. I was watching the game, and Javier Badia missed that kick. It was like a forty-something yard kick, and I started crying. I, I left the I left the house. I started crying. I was like, man, like we lost. I held that opportunity of, of, you know, making or missing. And, and I don't think, I, I think I only missed one against Miami. I'm not pretty sure, but. I think uh, you probably only missed one in your career at Florida, Florida State. <laughs> There's a funny video of you on the internet warming up in the Miami half of the field. And they didn't like you down there, did no, they? No, no, no. They, uh, they were pulling out all sorts uh, of tricks. They were just looking for trouble, right? They were just running around. I remember around, this. Yeah. I remember this before the game. Yeah, man. Yeah. Ganged up on yeah, this line. Right? Miami Hurricanes had to send a posse of linebackers to deal with one kicker on his own. <laughs> yeah, they were looking for trouble. They were looking for a fight. And I was I was uh, warming up and someone threw a football at me and I turned around and I was like, what's going on? Is there a problem? And and they that's when they all started coming and that's when everyone sees the clip of them around me and i'm like 
they were like, go back to your side. You're not allowed on this side. And I'm like, this is my stadium. Like, I can do whatever I want. First of all. <laughs> I own and this stadium. And I, I, kick on, I kick on this side right now. You guys aren't doing anything but just messing around. And what's funny is that one of the guys there that shoved me, he, uh, I ended up being on the, on the team with him when I was at the Chargers. He was like, hey, man, like, that was just, we were just trying to, like, intimidate you guys. Like, it was nothing serious. <laughs> And we'll be back to talk to Roberto Aguayo about his time in Tampa Bay and, dare I say it, one of the greatest segments to ever grace this show, so stick around. But first, a new segment, so strap in. Imagine what it would be like to be old. And imagine if we had any kind of budget to pull this off. Chris? Well, hello everyone and welcome to Shady Acres Nursing Home. I'm Henry, and this is my good friend Henry. Henry? I was thinking the other day about popcorn and how I used to love it. It was a delicacy back in my day. Remember, we'd only just figured out you could cook it. Before that, we were smashing our teeth up on the kernels, but we still had a good time because we didn't have now. And it made me think of a young man by the name of Terrell Owens. He always said, get your popcorn ready. Do you remember 2004 when you went to the Philadelphia Eagles the first time, the first play? Him and the Donovan McNabb. You remember that, Henry? The Donovan. 2004 Eagles, they were all right. They weren't great, but they were all right. And on this one play, there was no one better. Those were the plays. Those were the plays. Brian Westbrook in the backfield. And Terrell Owens, everybody all eyes, all attention on T.O. and how this will all work out. Well, I wouldn't be surprised to see the first play if they don't try to give the football to Terrell Owens. He looks his way. Fires it his way. There's Owens at the 45. Inside the 20, and on the first play at Philadelphia in an Eagle uniform, Terrell Owens takes it 81 yards right on the jersey number. Bill, you called it first play. They went right to Owens for the big strike. Jim, you talked about it. The town's excited about him. They played the first home game here. They introduced him. Is there one particular kick at FSU that you remember and you're like, yeah, that's the one. And, and you know what? As a, as a kicker, you got to have, uh, you got to be able to delete memories. And I think I did a good job of deleting like all the good, you know, all the makes too. I mean, I would probably say my long 53 yarder against um, Wake Forest and then my game winner against Boston College. It's always good to, to hit game winners, you know? That's an interesting one because it was also one of the rare times that you also missed, right? Yes, it was. It was because I remember, um, the drive going down, I was like, I'm confident, I'm ready to go. Yeah, I missed one, but um, this will be an opportunity. This will be a, able like to have a, a game winning kick. It ended up being like a 28 yarder. Everyone's like, oh, this is an easy kick. But at the end of the day, there's been a lot of people that have missed shorter kicks than that. Can you feel it when it comes off your foot? Do you know instantly whether it's going in or not? Yes, you know if it's flush, you know if you, if, you know if it's a 10 out of 10, and you know if it's a, oh man, that's not gonna go as far, or that's going a little bit left, or that's going a little bit right. People would always see kicks, right? And you make them, but not every make is a 10 of 10. So out of 10 balls, I probably hit six or seven flush. Those other four or three might not be as good, but as long as they go in, that's all that matters. Uh, honestly, Roberto, is there ever an easy kick? It's never an easy kick. You're relying on two other guys. Well, you're relying on all the guys that are blocking for you, right? And then you rely on the snapper to get it to the holder, you know, in the right location. And then the holder to put it down. There could be conditions, it could be wet. He puts it in the wrong spot. Because I want to ask about this. I wanted to get all Ace Ventura. Talk to me about laces in and laces out. What, it, what is the difference? What difference does it make? Dan Marino should die of gonorrhea and rot in hell. Laces out. First of all, it hurts to hit laces. You can feel it right away. The ball flight is gonna look different. It's, it might come out knuckly or it might go low. You don't know really where it's gonna go, but I, you know, I would say if you're inside of 30 yards and you, you see laces, cause you're looking at the ball the whole time. And if you see laces, 
you can manage to still make it. It might not look pretty, but you can manage to still make it. But if it's outside 30 yards, it, it, you don't know where it might go. The laces were in! They were in! And when you say see uh, laces, um, it's in that split second when you put your plant oh, yeah. foot and you see laces, you're like, oh, oh yeah. shit. And then you've just got to, do you adjust on the fly? Yeah. Like, what do you do? Crazy. Yeah, yeah, you do. You adjust on the fly. And that's why the job of the holder and the snapper is they get it there the quickest so the holder can put it down the quickest so you have the longest time to see it, right? So, I mean, I think I'll hand over to Hugh for the tamper period. Yeah. Hello? Yes? It is so. Oh. Right. Getting drafted in the second round, you you didn't think shit, shit. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was so excited when we drafted you. I was like, yes, because that Raymond James Stadium is cursed. It is cursed. No one yeah. can kick there. I refuse. <laughs> nobody can. Yeah. Because Chris was saying earlier about um, there was like an influence of Tiger Woods on your game. Like you changed the mm. way that you kicked, but when you came to the NFL, and then you only sort of found. Mm -hmm. You found your stride in San Diego hitting nine and nine. But you didn't tell anyone at the time. Um, I was trying to, to go through a, a change to get better. Obviously, everyone changes to, to you know, tweak something in their game and, and, and be better, right? And I was working on that. And I, I ultimately hadn't completely been confident with the new swing. I, I hadn't completely found it. I would say I probably found it 80 80%. Um, going into the season, uh, my first year, and that with the with the pressure I had um, being drafted in the second round, and you know being in the league, it's like you know you can't you can't miss. We we got you because you're you're automatic, right? right. And and rightfully so. You know I missed nine kicks in college. So, but once once those misses came in early on, it kind of put that that seed of doubt out of okay, you know, is this working or is this not? Should I go back to the old one? Um, and in the middle of the season, um, I remember after that North Carolina game, I hit the game winner. I was like, okay, what, you know, what do I got to do? So I kind of implemented a hybrid kind of a little bit of the old and kind of just struck it, um, kept it going through the season. And I finished well after that Carolina game. Um, compared to the first five starts, the first five games and in preseason. Um, so I was feeling confident and then going into the next season, it, it was just, you know, in the NFL, when when you've already been, you know, didn't show well and you were drafted that high, the the, the leash you could say is 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 pretty short. And I missed, um, I missed the kick in uh, the next preseason game coming into the next year. Um, and I think they, they were already set on bringing someone in. And, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't doing my job to the best I could. And rightfully so, you know, I got released. Um, but I continued working on that and that allowed me to sign on to the, the Panthers where I fixed it, continue to fix it there. And then, I mean, when I was at the Chargers, my, my swing was the best it's ever been. The timing, I guess you could say, wasn't wasn't the best, but but yeah, that's, that's kind of how it all worked out. And like everyone says, oh, what if Tiger kept the same swing that won him all those majors and, you know, won him at Augusta? Oh, he shouldn't have changed his swing, but we you know we we're both doing it to to try to get better, better. ourselves like as we professional to, athletes to get worse. yeah 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 i can't imagine how difficult that must have been to be completely aware yourself of the pressure and just still not being able to succeed at the level that you knew you were capable of succeeding at the time but now my wife she you know she helped me a lot along the way and i have you know a lot of credit for her um supporting me in those times but yeah you know it's 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 tough and after you know breaking all those records doing everything at fsu you know i knew i could be better but it stinks and you know, everyone gets fired, you know, everyone, you know, loses their job, but I lost mine on national TV, you right. know, on Hard Knock, that it's on replay. Everyone can Google it. You know, I, I'm good with it now. You know, it, it's a life experience and that I take on and, and I've learned from it. And I think I'm better for it now, you know? That's incredibly big. Yeah, that's definitely. awesome. <laughs> Speaking of which, did you meet um, Riley Buller on Hard Knocks? Oh, Bullock? 
No, 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 the linebacker that was on hard oh. knocks. Not Randy Bullock. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, no. yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we had Joe Dirt on yes. last week. Yeah. And Randy Bullock's yeah. next week. Oh, you did. <laughs> it's Kickers <laughs> Month from National Vintage League. I did know him. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Mullet, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second new segment we have in the NBL show. Let me introduce you to the William Perry Fantasy Breach. Senor, or should we say, fantasy, senor. Chris, my fantasy cupboard is bare. How am I going to eat this week? Never fear, Hugh, because it's time for leftovers. First up this week, we have QB. Drew Locke for the Denver Broncos. He's been sitting on the shelf waiting to ripen like an avocado. And now, ladies and gentlemen, is the time to throw him into the fruit salad. He is owned in only 9% of leagues. Go out and get him. Who's available at running back? Not many, but we got you one. It's Mr... Gus Edwards of the Baltimore Ravens found pay dirt last week and we feel like those crab legs might be good in a salad. Throw him in, see what happens. You had Chinese takeaway earlier in the week and where is it? It's in the center of the fridge. Get wide receiver, Kendrick Bourne. George Kittler's out and he is owned in 8% of leagues. You had it earlier in the week and it tasted pretty good. The last time Kendrick Bourne went out, he got 81 yards. So crack open the Chinese takeaway again and tuck in. Squeaky bum time with your tight end. Logan Thomas, yes, it's that stew that's been sitting marinating on bye week. And now he's ready to be reheated and slammed into your lineup. But my defense are on bye week. I need someone to step in. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the perfect source for your dry, bland team that you drafted earlier in the year. It's the Houston Texans who are playing a minchulous Jags, which should make any difference whatsoever, but you know the drill. Put some sauce on it. But Hugh, I need a kicker. What's in the fridge? What's that in that mysterious mason jar at the back? It's Mason Crosby. Why not start him? You need a kicker. You might as well. You don't know what's in the mason jar, but it smells pretty good. And now it's time to take a trip down to the vegetable crisper where everything must be used this week. That's right. This week's streaming options for one week use only. We're going into the vegetable crisper. And who have we got, Hugh? You know what? All the regular milk's gone off. There's no regular milk left. Well, it's time for milk substitute, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Dexter Williams, UHT. Get him in your lineup because all the other packers are off with the illness. Do not mention the illness. What happened to all that stuff you got from Whole Foods last week, Chris? Funny you should ask, because I do have here a little bottle of Quintez Cephas. It's a bit like kombucha. You don't really know how to pronounce it. You're pretty worried about it. It's been sitting around, and if it's going to explode, it's going to explode this week. Now it's time to look at our King of the Week, presented by King Fantasy Sports. Randall Corncob sitting there on its own, ready to get buttered up and thrown in against the Jaguars defense that have been abysmal against slot wide receivers this season. Why not throw him in? You never know what's going to happen. And I don't know if you caught a whiff of that when I opened that door, Hugh, but what's that smell? Each week we'll be looking at the mystery smell emanating from your fantasy lineup. And this week, Chris, if you'll do the honors, it's stinky old Todd Gurley against Denver, who do fantastically <laughs> against the run. And of course, he can't take basic instruction. Don't go into the end zone put him on your bench. And that is everything from William Perry's Fancy Fridge this week. If you need any more up to the minute fancy advice, please check out King Fancy Sports. But that's all from us. Stay crispy. And it's back to you, Roberto Aguayo. I'm worried there was just an avalanche of milk inside there. <laughs> Did you hear that go? Oh, it was the mayonnaise. Why do we even have mayonnaise? <laughs> Which of us eats mayonnaise? Right, I think we should launch into Something that I'm so, so excited about. Yeah. As you know, we normally do silly games, but we figured with Roberto on, it's actually rare that we have someone that knows exactly what they're talking about at such a skilled position. So we decided to send Roberto video clips of some of the most famously missed kicks in recent years. And Roberto is going to run through with us why he thinks those guys missed the kicks. Are you ready for... Aguayo, why, why did he miss? Do it. Oh. So
So, great. the first video we have is a classic. From January the 27th, 1991, Super Bowl 25, the night that Buffalo Bills fans' hearts were ruined. Big old Scotty Norwood shanking it wide right. Aguayo, why did he miss? So, I did see the video, and I, I think he just was late. He left it open and he didn't he didn't finish the swing. So he caught it a little bit open on the face and it stayed out right. When have you ever heard that about wide right? Everyone just goes, oh, he missed. No, he didn't. He left it wide open. Yeah, I would have thought pressure, but no. <laughs> no, he left it wide open. So the next one is from January 2019, NFC wildcard game, the famous Cody Parkey double doink. The double doink. Aguayo, why did he miss? The double doink. Oh <laughs> man, I'm looking at the, I'm trying I'm looking at the video right now. And and you know what? Cody Parkey is my good buddy and <laughs> I kick with him down here in Florida. And you know what? He hit he hit a good ball. It just I I don't I think he was playing the win and it just stayed true. Right. Are there stadiums in the NFL where you're like I need to be aware of the wind at Soldier Field? Yeah, and I've kicked in in, in uh, Soldier Field, and that man, that that is tough. And sometimes you hit it, and the and the wind just stops, and you're just like, or like it's blowing down here, but it isn't blowing up there. It was just unfortunate that it hit the upright twice. That's yeah, why yeah, I yeah. That's why you it. remember it. That's it's why you had a little thing. chuckle at yeah, double door. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> How much does icing affect you, honestly? Are you impervious to ice, Roberto Aguayo? Usually, it works out better more often. Like right, you make you know the kick the, the next time. the wind's going and stuff, um, right? You get to see how it flies if you yeah, hit it right. yeah. But if you hit it that yeah. first time and it drifts wide, do then the voices start going, oh. No, you're just like, well, the statistics show that. Is that, that Groza in the background? The <laughs> is that Groza? Is that yes. Groza? That is the <laughs> best <laughs> name for a dog I've ever heard. If we have an appearance from Groza, the fans probably yeah, would be very right? happy, honestly. <laughs> January 2016, Blair Walsh against the Seahawks. Aguayo, why did he miss? That's tough. He is also a buddy of He is also a buddy. <laughs> well, there, buddy there aren't that many kickers. They may have like 32 <laughs> friends. There's yeah. probably a support group of kickers. They all sit around in a basement going, I'm Roberto Aguayo and I'm a place kicker in the NFL. Yeah. <laughs> I think he just overcooked it. Um, he just went at it too hard. You're trying to get it through. You just overdo it. And sometimes, unfortunately, those things happen. So we've got two more. This one is from October 2018. And it's the only point after touchdown that Justin Tucker of the Baltimore Ravens has ever missed. The old wide-eyed thousand-yard stare. How did that come off my foot wrong? Aguayo, why, why did, did he, he miss? miss? Oh, I did see that. And honestly, I think the wind, there was a gust of wind maybe, but that came off quick to the right. Sometimes you just hit it and you're just like, wow, like, I didn't like, maybe it was going to go a little bit right, but I didn't think it was going to go that right. Can you tell, like, if you're watching on TV, can you tell if a kicker's like caught it properly? Yes, he didn't catch that one clean. So so when you don't catch a ball clean, the, the elements take more effect to it. Right. So that if that wind was blowing right, if you would have caught it a little bit cleaner, it might have snuck in, but he didn't catch it as clean and that wind took it. And we go to the final kick on Aguayo, why did he miss? What this have we got, Christopher? is a rare one. November 2014, the Boston College game where Roberto Aguayo hit the game winner. He also missed the kick. The man himself. Let's Aguayo, go through why it. Why did he miss? Let's go through it. What <laughs> happened? You weren't safe. You're never safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's so, trying not to throw his holders yeah, exactly. under the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, those, those are Blair Walsh wasn't allowed laces, so you're not allowed laces at, either. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're at home. That ref should have gave that to me. It was right <laughs> over the <up> right. <laughs> I was I was playing the win. It was blowing a little bit left to right. I overcaught it. Hit it a little bit too good. Oh, and the yeah. one it, it held well. off oh, yeah. right outside. Sometimes the one you kick the best don't go in. <laughs> I kicked it too well and it That's missed. That's the greatest response yeah. I've ever heard. <laughs> That's what you should have said in every post-game interview for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, too good. Kicked it too well. A miss, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That was so much fun. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing that, Roberto. I'm going to pitch to the fans that we make this a uh, yeah. segment every week. If you want this man on the show every week, get into the comments section and demand. This has got to be a bit. What We've a legend. We've rewritten Kicking History and we can do it every week. Do you still think that you have a chance to play in the NFL? Or hey, yes, Groza! Groza! That's Groza. The most important question of the thing. And Groza comes. <laughs> 
And I think that that's all that matters, really. I don't even think you need to answer that question. <laughs> yeah. I what, think what a brilliantly <laughs> deflected question. Who He's needs kicking when you've got miniature poodles in your life? <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, well, that was an absolute pleasure for one of my favourite episodes we've ever done on the MBL show. Give it up for Mr. Roberto Aguayo. What a hero. I want to thank you for being so candid about everything. Yeah, man. What a hero. Legend. Thanks, man. And I will not stop till I get you on this show every single week. Yeah, yeah man. Please. Thank you, guys. This is, this is fun. Yeah, uh, awesome, man. We try, we try. This was fun. Hey, you got, you got my number, so. <laughs>